The goal of any dealer at a fine mineral show is to bring pieces to the show that are exquisite. And so our next dealer has actually done that so many times that they've put the word in their name, Walensky Exquisite Minerals. Let's go and take a look. And here we go into Walensky Exquisite Minerals. There's Troy, how you doing, brother? How's it going, Brian? Good to see you. Stu, great to see you, brother. So I'm here to introduce our new exhibition called Atlas. And it is a locality show. And if you want a sneak peek of it, you can only access it on our secret QR code. Okay, let's the come in. The top one is the sneak peek of Atlas. The book comes out in about a month or two. This is the only way to view it right now. And okay. the bottom is a fun mineral survey if you have the time. We'd be delighted if you could do that for us. All right. Well, hopefully the viewers can scan this with their uh, mobile devices right off the screen and then go and take a look at Atlas, uh, an early peek at Atlas. Sure. And I'm going to turn it over to Big Stu over here to introduce some of the specimens. All right. So we chose these specimens. They were, we tried to do the entire world and we did highlights. We did Africa. We did Asia. We did the U.S. or at least the continents. And so each one of these specimens represents a different continent and a different mine on that continent. And we, I think we have 20 specimens. Now, originally, uh, in the pre-interview that you did with Troy, we had talked about the great blue cap that is in the exhibition. We hope to have, piece. and the cover piece, the we cover hope piece. to have it on okay. display. Uh, due to certain complications, it was not available to he be here at the Denver show, but we have everything else. Super. And, you know, in keeping with that theme, here's a tourmaline that we'd like to introduce to the world. Probably many of you have already seen it. It was the cover of the Malkan uh, Russia tourmaline uh, issue of the mineralogical record. Uh, Just a killer, killer piece. <laughs> Brian, what I find fascinating about this piece, besides its obvious beauty, is that if you see this tourmaline has got a purple pink color, okay. and this tourmaline is red. It's more red, yeah. And yet they obviously form together. Very unusual to see that distinction between two crystals that form together. And this piece, many people do feel it's the number one specimen to come out of Malkan. Yeah. And as, to the best of my knowledge, they have not found anything new there. And obviously, with the complications in Russia now, we won't be seeing any tourmalines for a long time. Absolutely, absolutely. But what a great memory of, you know, back when it was open and things were coming out. Absolutely. I mean, just incredible piece. And just to kind of give a sense of scale, there we right. are in terms of size. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's sizable a specimen. Piece. Absolutely. We used to take that. And then, and then we have these two other tourmalines from two other parts of the world. This one is from Madagascar. And this is a liticotite with quartz. And then to the right, we have this multicolored parrot-style tourmaline from Brazil from the Araconga mine. And God, that piece came this. out of the ground probably in the last two years. And this piece came out about five years ago, the Madagascar piece. Wow. And I believe those are all the tourmalines in the exhibit. You know, you certainly could have done an exhibit with nothing but tourmalines. So I commend you on your restraints. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's true. The, the colors, the forms, the shapes, the places they come from. You're right. You could do just a, easily a tourmaline show. Uh, and we, we, we've thought about it. And we may do it in the future. Sure, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we really enjoy these different themed shows. This piece is quite interesting, too. It's a bicolor appetite, purple and a yellowish green color from Afghanistan. It was a very small pocket, came out. We were able to acquire the entire pocket, and this is the largest and best piece from that pocket. Now, when did that come out? This came out about three years ago. Okay. Three years ago. So right kind of in the start of the pandemic time. Yeah. Uh, yes, unfortunately true. Yes, right during that time. Yes, yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. And we can move down. I mean, not that I'm ignoring any of these pieces. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not going to let you ignore this one. <laughs> this, this is insane. I mean, I, you know, I've been doing this 40 years, and I have never seen a Swiss smoky quartz 
of this aesthetic and this size and this quality with pink tourmalines. It's it's really got a unique aesthetic. Pink fluorides. Uh, pink fluorides. Did I, what did I say? Tourmalines. We're oh, selling tourmalines. We're selling tourmalines. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Pink tourmalines. Why not? <laughs> that, would, that would be that would be quite unusual. That would be very unusual for Swiss smoky quartz. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Pink tourmalines. Perfect. I love the way that this upper one is just so. It seems like so precariously oh, perched there. That that's what and and I what I like is it's almost like the the restraint, the the yeah. how they're just just two exactly the same size on this quartz. Uh, it, it just nature sometimes gives you perfection. You know, and one thing that I really appreciate about this, I've seen a bunch. I know uh, uh, James Horner years ago was at my house with uh, Wayne Thompson and my father, mm -hmm. and they had opened, they had a, a, a much larger, darker smoky quartz with a bunch of the pink sure. fluoride on the top, sure. uh, but it was so much bigger. Yeah. There's something about the size of this that just, it's kind of like, it's a perfect dimension. I love Absolutely. The size of this is yes. not too big, not too small, just right in between there. there. It's got simplicity of form and perfection, which is something that we always strive for. Superb. I love that. We'll move to that one keeps jumping out at me every time I walk. Oh, it's walk. got a lot of attention here at the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People, people will love it. Yes, yes. Well, now, there's a very special piece in this case. That is very, no, that is very meaningful to Brian. Absolutely. That I'd like to go to first. And that is the Wolfenite here with Mimitite from the San Francisco mine that your father mined. Yeah. No way. That's yes. right. And um, this so was amazing. a wow. joint venture among my father, Wayne Thompson, and James Horner. And they went back in here. This was two, no, this was 19, in the early 90s. That early 90s, for yeah. sure, yeah. And yeah. so I had just graduated from college. And I actually went down and I lived in Mexico at the mine for two and a half years with my father. Wow, I didn't really? know that oh, you yeah. lived with him there oh, too. Yeah. I didn't oh, yeah. know that part. I photographed, I was documenting everything that That's was going fantastic. on. And getting that mine started is a story. Someday I'll tell that yeah, story. Yeah, we're going to turn the camera around. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I actually found the the um so there was the old shaft that led down to where they believe the tourmaline or term we're stuck in tourmaline. <laughs> i know really <laughs> <laughs> but where the wolfenite was yes. we didn't want to go down there because there was the fear of getting the histoplasmosis from uh, uh from the bat guano right 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 and so we were looking for a different area to start the tunnel uh -huh. and i was wandering around in the um the uh, arroyo seco the dry river bed uh -huh. And I actually found just a really small adit, yeah. and it actually happened to be at the perfect level, and that was the start of the tunnel that we drove down to eventually get down to. That's um, great. That's great to these wolfenites. And from my to to the best of my knowledge, this piece was chosen by James Horner. He got second choice. Wayne Thompson got first choice, which was actually the other wolfenite we had in our in our last exhibition previous to this. And now we have the number two piece, which James Horner chose. And I'll tell you, there's something, and you and I, Stu, we talked about this earlier. A, that middle crystal is enormous. Enormous, absolutely. For yeah, yeah. San Francisco at the time that we were mining that, yes. with the memetites yes. on it. Um, but what really makes this remarkable is I love the matrix on it. Yeah. Because it's solid, and you can handled this without fear. Right. The one thing that was so bad about these Wolfenites is they were so fragile. Oh, As you know from your other piece, Absolutely. you never wanted to take that anywhere. Yeah, you don't touch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this, I mean, I immediately gravitated to this and remarked on both those qualities of it. And well, it has great I memories for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Superb. And now moving on to Europe, which, as we know, Today, Europe doesn't produce a lot of mineral specimens anymore because those mines are ancient. And we have two European specimens here. This one is from Sardinia. I call it the lemon. <laughs> and it really, it looks just like a lemon to me. It's a cadmium smithsonite from Sardinia. Sardinia is famous for this cadmium smithsonite. These are stalactites. And normally you just get a slice. And here you have almost a complete end of a stalactite. So this is the only one we've ever owned. And it's only one of, I don't know, maybe a half a dozen I've ever seen. And maybe the finest one, no. Mined a long time ago. 
And then up here, we have a fluorite from Spain, from the La Viesca mine, but an exceptionally beautiful aesthetic formation with this giant crystal right on top that's almost gem clear. And this is a more recent production, sometime in the last couple of years. Ah, super. Because the Spanish fluorite mines are still producing. Mm -hmm. And uh, occasionally they come up with something amazing like that. I love this. And, uh, and the yellow, there are so few minerals that are just this beautiful, almost fluorescent yellow. Yeah, and this is, absolutely. this definitely hits in. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it, these are, and, and we tried very hard, like we always do, to choose special pieces that are in some way very representative, very important, and at the top of level of whatever mine we chose. Absolutely. And it shows. All right. Well, this is an Decades. interesting piece because this is a slice of verticrosite from Argentina, which many people may have seen slices like this before. But this one is very interesting because this slice, if you, this one, there was a slice behind it and there's a slice in front of it. And the slice behind it is in the Natural History Museum in Paris. And the slice in front of it is in the DuPont Museum in Virginia, I believe. Is DuPont Museum in Virginia? I, I sometimes forget. But so they have the slice behind it and, we, and the slice in front of it. And we have the slice in the middle. And they're all like nearly identical. And it's complete. There isn't a single edge that isn't there. Very unusual to find one this big where it's totally complete and in perfect condition. And when you say complete, are you referring to the rind? The rind, absolutely, complete. that yeah. there's no break Unbroken. in the rind, yes. And, it and there's a part impossible. we can't see because it's in the it, base, but- But it's complete I as mean, well. You can, yeah, yeah, you can just see yeah. a hint of it there. Yeah. And this, this was a one-time find in Argentina, and they cut all the stalactites they found and never found them again. God, man, oh man, that is so super rare. Yeah. And it's just, it's, you don't even have to know anything about minerals to be able to appreciate that, especially Completely. when it's yeah. backlit like this. Yeah, it's, it's a gorgeous piece. Absolutely. And I actually like the fact that we've got holes in it because it, to me, it creates, it takes something that's very two dimensional, which is a slice. Yeah. And it, it puts an element of three dimensionality. Into Absolutely. It. Yeah. Yeah. Superb. And we can move on to the third case, which has, again, a, a, a large group of pieces from around the world. And here is one of my favorites. This is calcite on dioptase. And if you think about all of the Sumeb dioptase you've ever seen, it's usually reversed. Mm. The dioptase is almost always on the calcite. And as far as I know, there was only one pocket where the calcite was on top of the dioptase. And this is considered the number one piece from that pocket. And of course, being from Sumab, we're talking about it could have been 50, 70, 80 years ago these came out. I don't know for sure, but this one is spectacular with these white calcites just flowing down the green mountain of, uh, of dioptase. Now, do we have any theories or ideas why it might be reversed? And it's an interesting question that I don't know why in one pocket did the did the um, parigenesis of this group of minerals, these two minerals, reverse. Yeah. yeah. Not a clue, honestly. No, I, I don't know anybody who has a theory on that. Superb. And this is a very special piece that came to us from the Marco Amabli collection. Okay. And Marco was famous, or excuse me, is famous for collecting the very best from Canada. And this came out of a very special pocket where you see the purple tips, the green um, base, that I think may have been only found two times at the most. This piece appeared in the mineralogical record, um, actually maybe more than once. And we consider it, you know, among the very best Vesuvianites in the world. Now this was, was this field collected by him? No, not field okay. collected by him, but in his collection. In his collection, right. okay. Exactly, yeah. yes, yes. <clears throat> oh, ow. Superb, you know, there are <clears throat> certain people that if you know a piece was in their collection, right. it speaks to this was, a, this was a very high quality mineral. Absolutely, and Marco was the, is, he was like he's not with us. Of course he's with us. But he just doesn't, he, ha, he sold his collection, that's why. But um, yes, when you say Marco Amabli, you know immediately it's got to be something special. Exactly. Because that's the only thing he would have kept. Yep. 
and then and of course, I'm going to go straight to this. Oh, that's from your your home, uh, my home state yeah, where home I was state. born, Absolutely. the state gemstone of California. Now, your dad mined here too, didn't he? Yes, Absolutely. and I was going to yeah, say that yeah. because I love Benitoites yeah. because my dad and his best friend, who was my uncle Pete, Peter Bancroft, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. they went up there in the very, very, very early days when they were teenagers. That's right, I remember the high story. School. Yeah, exactly. And it's documented in Pete's book. His, yeah, his book. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I actually did an interview with the two of them talking about their first trip up there wow. where I cut back and That's forth great. between That's the two. Great. <laughs> and, you know, they came down with, you know, a couple hundred pound sacks yeah. having to hike down to Koalinga and like, That's you know, hitchhack back home. That's fantastic. Yeah. So Benitoites are always special to me. And what well, I like about this one, one, it's very thick. Yeah. You don't usually see Benitoites with thickness hey. and, and it, it, you know, I can't get a light into it, but it is jemmy at the top. Yeah. Well, you know, and also the way that it's trimmed here, it just really kind of, it sticks up there. It's yeah, perfect. It's, it, it does, exactly. A lot of them are flat on the matrix. Yeah, this one is. And not. I love the asymmetry of the matrix that it's sitting on mm -hmm. because to me, it draws the eye and it just makes it so much more dynamic. Right, and it actually balances the symmetry of a Benito crystal. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's like, great it's like point. Yeah, counterbalance to it. Yeah, yeah. Super, yeah. super. And then, you know, I always have a thing for windows. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting because prior to all the times that I started uh, going to Europe, mm -hmm. I didn't understand or appreciate them so much, but mm -hmm. they're so popular in Europe. Right. And they're making more and more headway here in the American market. Well, what we have found doing this is that most of the great ones never leave Europe yeah. simply because they love them so much and they won't let them leave. Exactly. So when we do get the chance to get something special like this, and this one is from the French side of the Alps, uh, you know, you grab it because there's so few of them available to us. That happens a lot with regional minerals that they never leave the region because right. the people there love them so much. Exactly. And that's exactly right with the Gwindles. Yeah, I mean, good luck getting a Swiss collector or a French collector to let go of one. Exactly. Yeah. On my death. Okay, well, then I'll wait till you die. Well, no, it'll go to my son or my cousin. Or my exactly. uncle. It's true. They do. They really do. <laughs> so, there, so there you see the Atlas collection that you can go to our website if you have the QR code. <laughs> uh, and anyone who can't get the QR code off the video, contact us. We will send it to you. Um, and we would love you to see it. And as a preview, and the print catalog will be out in about four weeks. Okay, so Stu, Troy, tell us how someone can get on the mailing list for the print catalog if they're currently not? That's really easy. You just send us a message through our website, uh, info at walenskyminerals.com. We will put you on the list. Yeah, Super. Well, message me directly, yeah. I can do that too. Yeah. Please come visit us in New York. Uh, send us a message either, either through Walensky or you can reach me on Instagram. Super, and here are some of the past catalogs. And I have to say, I was telling you this earlier, Stu, when I get these in the mail, I honestly see it as a gift. I like to take a little time off, sit outside by the pool, and very slowly flip through it. I love the fact that you print it on this wonderfully tactile matte paper. Mm -hmm. It just invites interaction with yeah, it. Yeah. And you, you guys Thank do you. such an excellent job that yeah. I can't help but start photographing that and posting <laughs> it and saying, people. We Get one of these because they're great. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Right on. Thank you. Stu, thank you thank much. Thank you, Brian. Anytime. Boy, yeah. Thank you, brother. All right. <laughs> Be well. Bye-bye. Right,